Hi, I'm Bill Saparito, Assistant Managing Editor of Time Magazine. Today I'm in Chicago with Doug Ullman, CEO of the Livestrong Foundation. Doug is here to rally the troops after the spectacular fall of Lance Armstrong. Doug, Livestrong is all about survivors. The obvious question, can Livestrong survive without Armstrong? Yeah, I mean, the irony here is that, that we're so focused on survivorship and focused on trying to give people tools and resources to help them when they're diagnosed with cancer. And now we're having to apply those same theories, those same approaches and philosophies to our own organization as we sort of go through uh, this turbulent period. So what's happened to the donors, supporters? What has been the reaction? You know, I think the reaction has been all over the map. For the most part, people who understand what we do and who've benefited from the programs and services have been overwhelming in their support. I mean, they've written, they've called, they've emailed, and they've said, I'm going to double down. I want to help you in more ways. Um, but our challenge now is to educate people who don't know who we are and don't know what we do and to help them understand why the services and programs we provide are so vital to so many people. So I started wearing a, a Livestrong band when I was diagnosed with cancer a number of years ago. I found it to be a very powerful uh, statement of community that I, I wasn't alone. Has the band lost its meaning? Should, it, should the color change to something other than Tour de France yellow? When I was diagnosed, I'm not sure I would have ever thought that I would wear something that signified being a cancer survivor or being a part of this community. And I think the experience you had is the same as all of us, is that it meant something so special to be, to feel like you were not alone. And I think now, I think it means that much and more to people in the cancer community. Um, did it lose a little bit of the fad nature of it? I'm sure it did. But to the people who wear it for either themselves or for somebody in their family or some loved one or colleague, um, I think it's as powerful as ever, and, and that's what we're hearing from a lot of people. Lance said in his interview with Oprah that the worst thing for him was losing Livestrong, the organization that he founded. Um, you asked him first to vacate his position as chairman and then uh, to leave the board entirely. Um, how did that go down? Lance called me and he said, should I resign as chairman? And I actually wasn't so sure at that point. It was so fresh, things were happening so quickly, and I said, let's talk about it tomorrow. And when we talked about it tomorrow, uh, we both decided that he should, and he agreed, and, and, and I think that was the right thing. Um, and in the ensuing weeks, there were further conversations, and you know, ultimately, uh, I think it was extremely difficult for him. But I also believe that he understood and understands why it was important for the organization. And, and that was ultimately the biggest sort of factor in, in that decision. The Livestrong headquarters in, in Austin is Lance through and through his artwork, photographs, trophies. Has, have you changed it at all? Has is, is that stuff been removed? If, or? No, we still have um, amazing artwork from his mm -hmm. personal collection. Um, you know, as I tell our team all the time, Lance Armstrong is the founder of the organization. He, to this day, is still the number one financial contributor. Um, and we're not going to rewrite that history. The fact that he started this before he ever had fame and notoriety and, and, and did it because he wanted to help other people. And again, that's the responsibility that we have now to carry on uh, that torch, so to speak. And so um, we don't have plans to, to make other changes to our headquarters. What are the biggest needs today in the cancer community? Well, I think there's a role for various pieces of the puzzle. For us, the biggest need is navigation. People who are diagnosed with cancer are automatically reduced to this level playing field where they don't know what to do, they don't know where to turn. Even if they're educated and have resources and insurance, it's still incredibly difficult. And so our focus is on helping people navigate that experience. How do they get financial assistance? How do they find a clinical trial? How do they get second opinions? What are the questions to ask? How do they get psychosocial support or transportation help? all the things that come with the diagnosis. And at the same time, we need more research, we need more public policy, we need more focus on prevention and early detection, which will ultimately create more survivors. So it's a complicated puzzle, and our piece is just one piece of that bigger sort of uh, spectrum of the disease. How will Obamacare affect cancer care? With the adoption of healthcare reform in 2014, more and more people will be covered and insured, which is a great thing. 
for people with cancer. People with cancer will have no longer have lifetime caps. People under the age of 26 will be able to stay on their parents' insurance. There'll be no discrimination based on pre-existing conditions. So those are basics that are good for the cancer community. I think beyond that, we have to see how things are implemented and see to make sure that people actually do get access to the care they need. What are the ramifications of sequestration on cancer care, on cancer research? We at this point, the cancer community, cannot afford to have programs at CDC, the public health fund, things like that cut. Ultimately, the ramifications down the road are massive because you have young scientists who go do other things. You have people go into clinical care as opposed to research if they can't get their grants funded. And so you have the brightest and best who are discouraged from pursuing their, their field. And ultimately, that's not good for any of us.